a la aldea disfrutando de la turba con un gran paquete y el Tota está un tanto abollado, ya que sus compañeras andan un poco venidas y no se despegan. Hello guys, welcome, good evening to every one of you. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, well, welcome once again to another week, another day. Well, enjoy it, Francisco. I see you're, you're eating. <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> good evening, teacher. I'm sorry, I am doing my, my work. <laughs> it's okay, no problem. That's Thank okay. You, uh, well, so as I was saying, welcome everyone to another week, another class. Once again, something new to learn today. And well, I hope everyone connected for today. Thank you very much for the ones that are always on time. That's really good. So, um, well, I'm expecting more of you to be connected probably within, within the next minutes. The others are going to be connected. So how was your weekend? Was it good? Did you have to work? You didn't work? Or what did you do in your weekend? Was it good? Um, um work um say uh, product the claro, mm -hmm. for example, internet cable. Um I I go I, I travel um, for other other um how se dice uh, capital to other capitals so you mean yeah. outside of El Salvador is that what you mean no uh sorry I know express or express for example San Salvador Mejapa oh uh, I see I I no remember what is the for for it uh, so you mean um, like another departments of El Salvador? Yeah. Oh. Departments. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Have you ever been here in Sulutan? Well, welcome the other ones that I see the just connected. Welcome, welcome. Well, already right. so it's uh eight oh two. So we are well. We have to start to what we have to do for today. Um, today we're going to have a little bit of grammar once again, but we're, um, we're going to try to have more practice when it comes to speaking today. So that's why, um, well, today's topic is going to be probably a little bit easy for some of you, probably for some others, it might not be in that way. Because, uh, I don't know if you guys remember a little bit about models. I know that probably some of you do, some others probably don't, uh, but that's what we're going to have for today. We're going to have a little bit about models in Freisel models. 
which are not difficult though, but um, if you have never seen that before, probably it might get you a little confused. Otherwise, everything is going to be okay. So let me just start sharing my screen with you all so we can start to what we have for today. So I really don't know if you guys can see it. Can you guys see something or not? Uh, we can see the PowerPoint presentation. Oh, already. That's good. Okay. So, um, let's see. As you can see here, today's class is going to be a little bit about models in the past and fry cell models. So, it's not going to be difficult. It's going to be pretty much just as a reminder of what we guys have to do when it comes to some grammatical structures and things like that. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we're going to have a little bit of practice today when it comes to speaking because I have noticed that some of you are still struggling with some, you know, some vocabulary and that's why we need to improve that. So I hope the others connect throughout the session. We just have 10 people today. That's really weird. Due to the fact that it's a Monday, probably, you know, Mondays are sometimes a little bit busy and I completely understand if the others have not connected yet, but probably they will. Um, well, okay, so let's get started. And we're going to start by, let me just see here, what we have, laser pointer, okay, here we go. All right, so we're just going to have a little review about, first of all, model verbs of obligation. That's pretty much what we're going to talk about today. Freisel, uh models of obligations as well. So I will just need someone help me reading and then we're going to go from there. We're going to have a little bit of an explanation and then we're going to just move on. But in this case, I will like to ask, let's see, um, Javier Lucero, can you please go ahead and help me reading this part? The yellow, well, like I don't know, the mm -hmm. yellow, I guess it's yellow, but go ahead, please. Obligation, etc. cetera. Okay. Must and have to, and go to, the verb must only exist in the simple present and present perfect forms, while the present form can express obligation, necessity, certainty or strong probability. The present perfect forms only express a strongly felt opinion or supposition. Okay, that was really good, thank you. Now, I'm pretty sure as I said at the beginning that some of you already know these terms and are familiar to that. So as you already know, must is something that you really have to risk. There's no other way that you can avoid that you must. Um, so in have to, it's also an obligation, but it's not like 100%. It's like, it's your choice, let's say, even though you have to, but at the end, it's going to be your decision if you want to do it or not. It's still an obligation, but it's not like must, or in which we really have to do it. Now, can someone tell me why do we have in got to between parentheses? Does any one of you have any idea regarding to that? I know it's Monday, guys. I know it's Monday. Nobody wants to talk. Everyone is tired. We don't want to be here. But come on, let's try to at least. Any opinion, even though it's not correct, just tell me something, whatever comes to your mind or any idea that comes to your mind when, when you see God to. You don't remember seeing that in the past or, or didn't you see that in previous classes or is it the first time you're seeing that? Is it the first time? Uh, for me, at least, is the first time it's seeing gotta 
in a moral verbs. Class. Okay. Okay. When do you were you thank you? Uh, were you saying something? Yes, that I really don't remember. You don't remember, but do you have like or do you remember like at any class you saw something like this or or it's that you forgot it? That's uh, maybe I forgot it. Okay, good. Now Teacher, can yeah. I think it's kind of uh like a duty that you have to do, but it let them have to, maybe. Okay, that's that's a really good guessing. Now, um the reason why this isn't here, guys, is because have to when it comes to like British accent, like say some British people or even some Americans have uh, or they tend to say things like that using this this part right here why because this is a, like an old version of the english or old people uh they tend to use it as a way of being more respectful for example i have got to instead of saying have to they include this little god before i have got to so for them to express you know or being a little bit more respectful even though if you say have to or i have got to that's going to be completely the same thing now can someone tell me in informal language what is the contraction that people uses or that people use to refer to got to when it comes to informal language? Gotta? It is gotta. Gotta, yeah, that's correct. We gotta do what we gotta do, right? So that's that's the way they, they say it. And, and you gotta actually, catch them all. <laughs> yeah, you gotta catch them all. Yeah, so that's informal English. So it's pretty nice that you all have an idea regarding to that. That's good. Remember, um, when it comes to informal language, it does not mean that you cannot use it. Of course, you can use it. But um, like with more, you know, when you get to know people or when you are familiar with with who you're talking with or if you are friends or something like that or otherwise if you want to sound more professional it's not it does not sound like good but you can still use it that's not a problem or if you want to if you're working at a call center or something or if you are going to work at a call center or something you are going to hear some of those uh, contractions a lot now uh as i said at the beginning this is something that you already know or probably you don't remember but you saw it before i'm pretty sure because i remember some of you were in my previous classes and i remember giving or teaching this part of for some of you now i wanted to explain something in here can you see this contraction in here mustn't so this one, guys, we got to be a little bit careful because it's not formal English. This is informal, but um, nevertheless, it, it means that you will probably see that in some of, you know, probably in a, in a website or sometimes if you go to... Um, Facebook or something, there will be something related to that contraction. Sometimes or at school, probably they told us or if you were or someone told you, no, that does not exist. It exists, but that's not formal. So it's informal English. So someone uh, told me one time, oh, but that's that it doesn't exist. It does, but it's informal that's the only thing that we have to remember so must not or even when it comes to speaking or spoken english we don't use that contraction people usually say must not and that's it now um remember that those are the only two that we have when it comes to obligations so we're not going to focus on the others those are the only two that we're going to be talking about and then later on we're going to see the fractal models which is probably something as well that you already know that now let's see um i would like to have uh, mr wilver help me reading this part the first part right okay. here 
if other things are required. Required. The speaker, required. The speaker or writer. Writer. Uh, must use for. Must use form of the synonymous model. Very hard to. This model auxiliary has a normal tense, including a progressive or continuous form. These are not common, but need to be used in some cases. Okay, this is just uh, this chart right here only explain us the differences or how we have to use them or how we have to use have to in all different tenses. Example, present, we know have to and has to depending on the, you know, of the pronoun. Now, which pronouns am I going to use with has to? Can someone tell me that's an easy question? Uh huh. Third person. And what's the third person? Is, uh, it, and he. Pardon. Uh, sorry. He, she, it. Okay. Okay. That's good. Now, uh, that this is something that we all should know at this moment there's something if you don't know it okay you have to study that means that you have to study now present perfect How, when do we use present perfect to refer to what to refer to what guys when when an we... action that started in the past and hasn't finished yet okay that's good Excellent. An action that started in the past, but it has not finished yet. That's an action that still probably we're still doing at the moment. Now, the past is obviously something that happened in the past and finished in the past. So, Nadia, I see that you're regretting. So, okay, no, never mind. Now, the future is just we already know. Now, I will just have Wendy, please help me with the affirmative part, just this part right here. Just read it. That's the only thing that I want you to do. Has to, have to, has, have to, have, had to, had to, and will have to. Okay, does anyone know the informal way of saying have to or like the contracted form? No. Have you ever heard have to? Yeah. So that's that's it. So uh, if you ever heard, or if you ever hear, I'm sorry, someone that speaks really fast or someone like from Atlanta, Georgia, or normally or usually black people tend to use, or black community in the United States, they usually use these type of, you know, contractions. So if you ever listen to, to them speaking in, in, if you listen, hafta, that's the contraction of have to, okay? So that's just a little tip for you re to, re to remember. Now let's go with Alejandro. Can you please, Alejandro, help me reading the negative part? Yes, teacher. Uh, that's not negative. That's not have. To mm -hmm. do not have to doesn't have to don't have to um in the present perfect is has not had to have not had to in the past is did not did not have to didn't have to okay. and for future is will not have to and won't have to. Okay, uh, can you repeat futuro again? Say that again. Okay, will not have to. No, I mean the word. Uh, future. Future, okay. Daisy, yes. Carolina, go ahead, please, with the progressive or continuous. I'm having two. Okay. He's having two. Uh, say, the, say this one again. 
Having. 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 Mm -hmm. Are having to. Has been having to. Have been having to. Mm -hmm. Was having to. Were having to. Will be having to. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on, guys, due to the fact that, I mean, this is information that at this point we already know. We're just refreshing. Now, something really important, the form had not to is sometimes used, but, gener but it is generally considered to be archaic. What does it mean? Had not to at this moment, it's, uh, it's most of the time considered like, all language okay so examples that we have with must and have they usually refer to firm obligation and necessity certainty or strong probability and must have only supposition now i will like to have uh let's see rafael help me reading number one maritza isabel number two francisco alberto number three then we go with jenny number four arturo ramirez number five and then we finish with yanira mendoza number six go ahead you must be a doctor at once okay thank you i have to be at school tomorrow at 8 a.m I have an exam. Exam. I have an exam. I have an exam. Okay. Number three. Who is number three? Me teacher, you. Okay. You mustn't touch that no. play. Touch. 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 Mm -hmm. You mustn't touch that plate. It's too hot. Hot. It, this is it's not hot. It's like a little, like a little, like a letter A, hot. Okay. Now let's go with number four. Who has number four? Okay. I have I to see to a see doctor. Oh, who was? For me, it was four. <laughs> Okay, so you no, go. No, Gardner, I am four. <laughs> okay, so you go with five then. Jenny, you go with five. Okay. Um, I had to break the window. I lost my key. Okay. Number six. The manager is in here. He's had to go to Washington on urgent business. Urgent. urgent, urgent. No, it's urgent. not Ur urgent. Like a letter R. Uh, remember that sometimes English we have to fake it. Why? Because Ur we no urgent business. Ur Ur no urgent business. No, it's not. You're saying you're you're saying air. It's er like Ur. Ur. urgent. urgent. Art and business. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, we have to to be careful with God with this in here. It says take care to distinguish. Does anyone have any question? No. Okay, so I heard something. Teacher. Yeah. Could you could you return to the last slide? To this one. Uh huh. For a bit for to see the examples. Examples must and have to be used to express a firm obligation or necessary. Certainly. Certainly or strong probability. Probability. Probability must have only. Supposition. 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 Uh, teacher, uh, <clears throat> in this example, mm -hmm. what is um, each each one that 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 examples? 
I don't know what I don't know what you mean. And uh, can you reformulate your your question? Uh, because letter A, B, and C are examples. No, no, no. That's 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 the way of must the and way. have the use. The use that we have. The examples are one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. But which is which is one? Uh, for example, you must see a doctor at once. Oh, I, I I guess I know what you're you're trying to say. You're trying to say like, for example, number one is it A, B, uh -huh. or C? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. All right. So now let's let's take a look. You must see a doctor at once. When it comes to A, B, or C, does anyone have any idea when we see something or when we say something like that? What would it be? Letter A, B, or C? Can I have some For ideas? Me, letter, letter A. A. Letter A, exactly. Why? Because it's necessary, like in the whole year, like for example, it would take one you year, you must see yeah. a doctor like once a year it's like you are you are not immortal like you will have to see a doctor it will be necessary like an obligation or a necessity so that's why we have number one so number one will be letter a but it's not an obligation teacher it's not an obligation but it comes to a necessity necessity yes. yeah mm -hmm. So, uh, it's it's clear, or you want me to go one by one? One by one, please. Okay, so if we go with number two, I have to be at school tomorrow at 8 a.m. I have an exam. So, let's take a look. Will that be a firm obligation or necessity? Strong probability? Obligation. Obligation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did what what do the others think? Will that be an obligation? Certainty, maybe. Yeah, certainty or strong probability. Why? Because when we have have to, it's like uh, an obligation or same certainty. Because it's something that you decide if you want to have it or not. I can tell you, okay, guys, tomorrow we have an exam. But are you going to be here? We don't know. It's like it's a strong probability because you will, you know that you have to. But you are not sure yet because it's a strong probability. You know what I mean? Who's who's the one that was asking? Because I, I I don't know if that's it's been clear for you, or we still or you're still trying to figure that out. Alejandro, I see that you raise your hand. Do you have any question? No, you don't. Okay. Uh, who was asking? I really don't. I really don't know. Hello. Hello, teacher. Oh, so are, are you understanding what we're trying to do in here? Or are you understanding the use of or the usage of that? I have to break the window. Teacher, the number five, mm -hmm. I had to break the window. I lost my key. Mm -hmm. uh... So, uh, in my opinion, teacher, mm -hmm. when I I have used to have a hard to, mm -hmm. uh, it's an obligation. Yeah, of course, it's an obligation, but but not really an obligation. How can I tell you? It's like it's gonna be like a strong 
probability that comes with a deep obligation. You know what I mean? It's like you decide whether you want to do it or not. But when we use must, it's something that you cannot really change. It's like a hundred percent obligation. Um, for me, it's difficult to identify the certainly or strong prob probability, teacher, mm -hmm. in this case. Sometimes, okay, sometimes we're going to go by logic in how, how come that. For example, if you lost, let's say, let's take a look like, like a little bit deeper. If you go to the mall and you're driving your car and you forgot the keys in the car, what are you going to do? You have a different options, right? You can either call the insurance. Yeah, uh, call, call the insurance if you have an insurance, okay? Or if I, you can ask for help, you can cry, you can do whatever you want to do. We have different options, right? But also, like, what's a possibility or probability in this case? You can break the window. That's a probability. So in there, it's when we use the logic to identify whether it's an obligation. We cannot say that breaking the window is an obligation. It's not. Why? Because we have different options. It is a necessity. It is not because it's, it, it won't. If you have different options, it's not necessary for you to break the window. But it will be a strong probability that if the other options failed, then the strong probability will be to break the window. Mm. It's more logical, let's say. Like, you have to take into consideration logic sometimes. <laughs> yes, and in this case, it's not an obligation, teacher, because I can do another thing, but I don't want to break my window. For yeah. example, if I forget <laughs> if I forget the the key inside of the car, I don't want to break the window. Of course you don't. It's like that's why we were saying it's like a strong possibility due to the fact that the other options that you already had failed. So first you try the other options and we still have a probability of breaking the window if the other options didn't work. Teacher, and then uh, to express obligation or ne necessity or a uh, strong probability, we use have to. And only for supposition, must have. Must have, yeah. Why, why do we say, um, why do we say supposition? Uh, it comes with an obligation, but supposition, I'm sorry, it's like, um, let's say we don't have one here, but the we can... Is must have or only must? Only must. Well, what do you mean? Only must. No, must. Let her see, uh, say must have. Yeah, it's must have. If you use only must, that's an obligation, 100%. It's something that you have to do. But, I, but it's not use uh, both, both of them, must have. Yeah, must have, both of them. Um, yeah. For example, that famous song, Must Have Been Love from Roquette. It does exist. Must have Why? been love. Yeah, must have been love. That's, yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, it's you great. see... Yeah, but in, in the example teacher, I don't, I don't see must have. No, we don't have an example there because uh, for me, I thought, Billy, I, I, I thought, I thought that you already like knew could, this. Could, could you create one sentence, please, teacher? Let's let's for see. Claim must have. Let me just write it in here just for you. Mm -hmm. In Spanish, the translation is like debió ser, right? 
Ya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Debe ser. Debe ser. Debe, ajá. O ha de ser. No es ha. Ya, yeah. it's in present. Okay, so we have an example there. That must have been explained before. Do we understand this one? Yeah. Eso debió haber sido explicado antes. Es una suposición. Yo estoy suponiendo que ustedes ya lo sabían. So eso debió haber sido explicado antes. That must have been explained before. In this part here, we can also have a contraction and we can have must have, which is this contraction, must have. That mm -hmm. must have. Must have. That's how we say it, okay? It's mm -hmm. it's more clear for you, Janira? Must have a could, could be contract. Yeah. Must be. Must, must be. Must have. Must have. Must have. Must have. Excuse me. Must must be. Como, como es? Must have. Must have. Must have. No, 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 no. Must have, like the V. V as in Victor. Must, must have. have. Mm -hmm. Must. Must have. No. Make the sound of the letter T. Must have. Must yeah. have. Must and have. We, we, just, uh, we just make the sound of the letter B. V. Must have. Must have. That's what we do. Okay. So what was your question, Alejandro? Sorry. Yes, teacher. If, for example, in the exercise or example number six, if, for example, uh, the sentences say the manager isn't here, he must have. No, we don't have must got, be there. No, for example, I, I say mm -hmm. he must have to go to Washington or urgent business is it, seria, um uh, supposition. Okay, what we, what we have to remember is that when we have have, the following verb needs to be in past participle. So we okay. cannot say must have go or to go, no. Yeah. How would we say he must have gone, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's another. It could, could be a supposition. A supposition. A supposition. Every single yeah. time yeah. that you use must have only will be supposition, oh. like all the okay. time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, you're very welcome. So now, um, here we were just explaining, like, we have to be careful when it comes to distinguishing the correctly use of had to and must have. For example, they had go to London. It means that they were obligated to go to London. They didn't want to, but they were obligated. Now, they must have gone to Chicago. It's like, in my opinion, they have certainly gone to Chicago. It's like we are making a supposition. You see, that's the real difference. So we we have to really understand whether to use had to or have to and must have or must have. You don't really have to make the contraction if you feel uncomfortable doing that. But I will highly recommend you to start practicing like to make the contraction if you feel that is difficult for you. Why? Because Americans or people that speaks English, like they are native from the language, they love using contractions every single time. So you have to learn how to use them as well. Okay. Now, um, this is what I was saying before got to. It's like, uh, as it says here, have to is often accompanied by the word got to, particularly in spoken English. For example, we have here, so he's got to get. It's like if we have he has got to. 
or we've got to hurry. It's like if we say we have to hurry, it's pretty much the same thing. As I was saying before, informal styles of saying that. This one is usually used, particularly in spoken English. You will rarely see it when it comes to books or very formal, uh, you know, documents or things like that. Now, before moving on to the next part, is there any questions so far? Well, okay, so I will boom, move on. And then we have Freisel model verbs of necessity and obligation. This is very easy. I'm pretty sure that the majority of, of you already know uh, some of them. Be supposed to, that's a Freisel model verb. Why do we call them Freisel? Because it's a, a conjunction or it's an union for three so three little words get together to form one Freisel model verb. So be supposed to, what does it mean? What does it mean, be um, supposed to? I think it's like a, um, I can say in Supone Spanish. Que. <laughs> Okay, so if we have the example, I'm supposed to be at work by 8 a.m. every morning. What do I we sure understand? Do that. Se supone que debo estar a las 8 a.m. cada mañana. Okay, do the other do the other ones agree with what he said? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. It is something that you should. Okay, I'm supposed to, se supone que debo estar en el trabajo a las ocho cada mañana. So we have a little, this is just for you to, like, as a reminder for you, because at this, at this point of the advanced level, you should have an idea about that. Like, how do we use it? First of all, the subject, then the Freisel model verb. Remember, uh, this is going to be depending of the pronoun you use because if i say you what would it what would it change in here where you are you are supposed to be at work by 8 a.m every morning okay now be obligated to what does it mean Está obligado a. Estar obligado a. Now, for example, Maria is obligated to send money to her family in Mexico every month. How do we translate that? Maria está obligada a enviar dinero a su familia a México cada mes. Excellent. Now, we're going to, we already know that because that's, that's what? Ir a alguna parte? Be going to, we're going to. So if I say we're going to hike. I'm not pretty sure, but I think it's uh, una caminata. Hike. Anyone have an idea what this hike means? Hike is escalar. For 20 miles. In <laughs> Ajá, así los quería agarrar a todos, ¿verdad? vocabulario básico, si no ha ido, absolutely, we don't remember those little things at this moment. Escalar, teacher. Escalar, Mike. Los otros veo rostros caídos, rostros de ni que eso, teacher, yo cuarte, y qué barbaridad, no entiendo nada, so what is going on? This is very basic, guys. This is a reminder. Okay, be going to it's like future. So if I say we are going to vamos a, you see, we are going to, you are going to, I am going to, and so on and so on and so on. 
Now, have to is similar to what we saw before, and have got to is the same explanation that we saw before. Now, Alejandro, yeah. Teacher, excuse me. Um, going to is a, uh, it's um, no, it's a, uh, a uh, future. The closer future that we call it, the closer, the closer future. future, right? Why? Because it's something that we know that we're going to do it closely. Like, like for example, we are going to finish class at the end. It's something that we already know that we are going to do. It's closer future. Mm -hmm. Now, any other questions so far before we go to the practice? Well, no questions at all. So I'm going to take that as 100%. So Peter, now, yeah. just a favor. Someone has the micro on and it's kind of annoying the noise. Yeah, it sounds like echoing, right? I was listening to the, like a little echoing or something, like an echo. So please try to have your microphones off so we we don't have now we go to speaking activity and i'm pretty sure that you know about homophones do you like male male pair pair you see remember that okay so i'm going to see how you guys do in this activity and it will be a teamwork activity why? Because if you, if any one of you do not remember to what I'm talking about, probably someone you're going to be working with might remember. So I want you all guys to help each other. And we are going to have this activity, which is a speaking activity. And the groups, depending on like how many groups we have, we will have your participation at the end. So it will be probably either one group today or the others for tomorrow. But I need to listen to every one of you speaking. Why? Some of you never participate in the class and we really need you to speak. We are in advance. We shouldn't be worried about speaking a language. We all should be comfortable. And if you don't know how to say something, that's why we're here. We want to improve. We want to, you know, to learn some different things or pronunciations that we do not know. Now, it's understood what we're going to do? Is it understood? Did you understand? Well, if not, I'm going to see you later in your participation. So it says here, create a conversation in which you will have to include at least three homophone words. Then everyone on the group will repeat them all. What does it mean? For example, if we use three, then everyone in your group will have to repeat them all so I can listen to the pronunciation. If you want during this time, what we can do, it's obviously create the conversation, but also you can practice be between uh, yourselves and try to help each other in case you don't know how to pronunce some, something, okay? So now- Peter, like yeah. for example, I ate eight apples. Exactly. You see, that's similar to that. Or we have desert and dessert, which is pretty much, we write it in the same way, but both of them are completely different things if we don't know how to use them. Now, I think this activity is very clear. So we are 21 on the call. And I need you all guys to go to your breakup rooms and start working on that, okay? I will see you in 10 minutes.
I met this, this word. I have born that is um, como aburrido. And in board, the pizarra. Board, board, eh, de aburrido y board de pizar. I think the aburrido is boring. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the aburrido is boring. Boring. The, the, the sentence with the use como font index in the, <coughs> I don't know. Your example is beer. And beer, the dream. <laughs> and beer, the, the animals. Uh, I don't know the other example, but I create the conversation or the sentence with the, with the word. They write the the the, the sentences anyway, or only the the picture in the in the in the class. Um, I think that they use the other words. Hello, teacher. Please repeat for activity, please. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> okay. So first of all, we have to create a conversation. In that mm -hmm. conversation, you will have to use homophones. What are homophones? Are words that are, you know, that we pronounce them in the same way, but mm -hmm. they mean completely different things. For example, if I say... Um, you know, train, train. I can use train to refer for, you know, the mean of transportation, or I can say train as a verb, to train some someone to do something, you know? So we have to use at least three homophones in the conversation. And then you can talk about anything or everything. Wait a moment. Bird. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a uh, many example. I repeat car and car. Tree and tree. Be beer mm -hmm. and beer. Bear and bear. It's right. The other, the other example, uh, wash. What? Wash. Ah, uh, wash and and another one. And uh, uh, wash and what? I don't remember. I can hear you very well. Okay, and. Yes, and what is the other? Air, the aire. Oh, air, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other is, is about what? The other is hair. Oh. <laughs> hair, like a, like, like a hair. Went to the park uh, with the our movement. bikes, as all like right. this. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I I we went. I think uh, in the park I saw um a man with a bird to painting a little bit or a little bit <laughs> our bikes <laughs> and beer. The bear the, 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 the man. You think you think you have beer? You think you have beer? But no beer, the drink. Beer, beer, the party. No.
Did you understand? Yes, I am. Thank you. How are we doing? Looks like all the groups misunderstood what I said. So I've been checking all of the groups and that, well, we're gonna see later on it. So I really- Teacher, we're trying, mm -hmm. I don't know how to make a conversation about it, but I'm trying to write sentences. Yeah, that's- For example, that, that's good. she have two short shorts. Is that okay? Say it two again. Short, short, two short shorts. Two short shorts. What do you mean? Yeah. Is that she has like a like a like a little short by short? Yes, but I don't know if that's okay. I mean, that's okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna take it as okay. You, like, yeah, that's good. For example, I stare at the stairs. You just have to add an S in the second word, but it's pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you're doing, but the, but that's okay. At least you're trying. So let me see how the others are doing. Okay, guys, I was checking all the groups and I saw that the majority of you misunderstood what the activity was about. Now, what did you guys understand? Because I was checking some of you were not even having a conversation. Some of you were not even there saying something. It's like, I don't know. So teacher, we weren't talking talking too much, but because we were thinking. Okay. What about the others? We were trying to say some um some words that sound equal. Equal, okay. Like for yeah. example. Uh, for example, um, present and present. Okay, that's really good. Nevertheless, the pronunciation is different. Because if you say present, that's the verb. Okay. Is that, is that the verb? Present. Present. And if you say oh. present? is like a gift like a gift like okay a gift. you see those are homophonous words okay now we will have um a challenge for every one of you and this challenge will be um well, it's, it's really easy it's going to be a tongue twister uh and i will send it here through the chat okay a tongue twister that we will have it for tomorrow try to study during the day try to repeat it try to say it and i will ask every one of you tomorrow once we begin the class okay let's see let's try to have someone right now let's just try it let's see um Will someone well, would like to try to say it just to practice? No. So for tomorrow then.
Okay, so for tomorrow, remember that is the first thing that I'm going to ask you. This tongue twister, okay? I need everyone to start practicing. I have been checking on the groups and I see that we still have some problems when it comes to pronunciation, guys. How do we say uh, demands here in this area? The chin? I mean, the hair. Ah, beer. Bear. Bear. Bear? Bear. Bear? Bear? Okay. I think bear. bear. You see? You see, we still having problems there. I also heard, how do we say pájaro? Bird. 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 Bear. Bear. <laughs> Guys, oh my God! Okay, so I'm I'm Bird. just I'm just checking and paying attention to those little things, and I will make you practice. Why? Because at the end of this module, my goal is to have you all pronunciating correctly. I don't know if in the other modules probably they were not like pushing you all to make the right pronunciation. I really don't know. But teacher. really, but with no, some people used to participate and they had a, an awful uh, pronunciation, but ne, no one <laughs> helped them to 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 to, to improve, improve their, their pronunciation. Yeah. I know, and that's that's not what I try to do, okay? That's why I always tell you guys try to participate because the the more you practice the better you get. Why? Because if I listen that you are mispronouncing something, I will let you know. We don't say it in that way. And you notice that every single time that you are helping me to read, I always interrupt you and tell you, no, we don't say it in that way. Why? Because my purpose is that I want you to be successful in the language. I can have you all here pronouncing the way you want to pronounce it. And if you want to say the way you want to say the words, but no, that's not a purpose. Then at the end you will be, or you will try to talk with an American and the American is going to say like, well, who taught you English? Where did you learn English? It's, it's like, that's going to be a little bit embarrassing for you because you're going to say, oh, you know, I was studying English, but then you're, you didn't really study English, okay? So that's that's my main goal, okay? For tomorrow, I need you all to practice. Try to do it during the day. If you're driving, try to go, okay, how much wood would a wood chalk chalk if a wood chalk wood chalk wood? It's not difficult. You <laughs> <laughs> see, or how much wood would a wood chalk chalk if a wood chalk could chalk wood, okay? So yes. let try to practice it during the day, or if you cannot talk because you're working, try to have it in your mind like, okay, how much wood would a wood chalk chalk if a wood chalk good chalk wood? So then you're while we're doing that to try to make our tone, you know, to twist a little bit. Why? The letter R or some letters in English are completely different. So I hope this. Sure. You, yeah. Go ahead. Before you go, uh, can you help us with the pr right pronunciation of pájaro? Oh. Okay, so we say bird. 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 With a little, a little D at the end. The bird. 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 Yeah. bird. The thing that we have bird. here. That's the bear. 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 Man's bear. Man's bear. bear. Okay. Bear. And we also bear. say the bear and the bear, like, which is the animal. Okay. Bear and bear are pronunciation. Bear like and bear the drink. Yeah. 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 That's pretty much. Yeah. So, bear. and then for the drink, we don't say bear. We say beer. That's a like e, beer. <laughs> Esa sí todos se la saben, vea. Rarísimo. That's weird. So everyone knows how to say that one. Well, anyway, it's my pleasure to be once again with you guys. Try to practice tomorrow. And I hope to see you all tomorrow at the same time, okay? Hope you all have a good night. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.